So let's talk Moody Light. Now, T-Mid did a video talking about the Beauty Dish and how it is his go-to modifier for Moody Lighting. So in this one, I want to show you how we can get Moody Lighting with the Beauty Dish. Now, I have a similar Beauty Dish. This is a Photo Deox 22 inch, but I don't have a grid and I am using the diffusion sock. Now, he likes to use a grid without the diffusion, which is totally fine. And having the grid will definitely help uh, get that moody lighting easier, but I want to show that you can still get that moody lighting without it And I also want to touch on the inverse square law So I'm going to get into that a little bit later in the video. So definitely stick around and I'm going to give you a visual um, Demonstration of the inverse square law, but first things first. Let's just jump into this. Okay, so I've got this hat there So that way my focus doesn't focus on her because you know cameras are biased and they will go towards the lighter thing over me um so first things first, I have this beauty dish set up in a more traditional way that you typically will use a beauty dish. They're really designed to be more in front of your subject and angled down. So I want to show that first. So right now, uh, first of all, the subject is five feet off of the background. And again, I'm going to get into the inverse square law later to show you what happens if you have your subject um, closer to the background. So the subject is five feet away. I've got my beauty dish roughly two feet away. We have it in front. I've already metered, so I know that I'm getting F4 of light and I want it to meter so that way I can be consistent as I move the light. I wanna make sure that the light falling on the subject continues to be F4. So right now, as you can see with this light, very nice light. Obviously, when you use a beauty dish, you do get nice light. We do have some shadow right here underneath the chin area. Um, but all in all, the light is very nice. But what you'll also notice is that we're getting some light back here on the background as well. Now, when it comes to moody lighting, there's two aspects of your image where you're going to have that mood. The light that's hitting your subject and the light that's hitting your background. So right now we have a nice good even exposure on the subject again it's really nice light but the subject is pretty much fully lit aside from the shadow underneath the chin which kind of just gives definition not necessarily mood so aside from that shadow subject is lit and the background is lit as well so we're not really getting mood here this is going to be more like beauty lighting so if we want to add some mood what what can we do so the first thing we want to do is we want to feather the light. So by feathering the light, that's essentially going to put some more shadow on the subject. And then it's also going to help to uh, have that light not hit the background. So I'm going to start off feathering it, not aggressively, and then I'm going to feather it a lot and, and show you how we can combat those shadows that we're going to get. So if we bring this around here and I need to adjust my camera where it's focusing at because with me constantly changing, I gotta stand in different different spots. So I really wanted to do this, uh, this video just raw so that way you really can see everything. Okay, so now if we bring this over a little bit here, it's uh, kind of more like uh, Rembrandt lighting almost, not quite, but, uh, or maybe it is. Yeah, we got a little, little triangle there. So now we kind of have Rembrandt lighting. So of course when you have Rembrandt lighting, um, that's, that's a more moodier type of light to begin with, but, and, and, well, not, but, and you'll see that we did lose some of that light on the background, but it still isn't necessarily moody, moody. We're still getting quite a bit of back, quite a bit of light on the background. So let's, uh, let's meter this and make sure I'm still getting F4 for my subject here. So we're still getting F4. And if I come back here and I meter Back here, we're getting F 1.4. So we're getting three stops of light less on the background. Now, if I bring this back around, just to show you the difference. So let's bring this back around into this position right here. And so now if I come back here and I meter, so now I'm getting F2. So there's a extra stop of light that is hitting the background with it in the traditional beauty light position versus when I feather it. So let's go back to feathering it this way. So again, now that's kind of more Rembrandt. But if you really, really, really want a moody, a moody look, we're going to bring it around and we're going to we're going to split light it. So now we have that traditional split light, which I don't particularly love with portraits. It's just personal preference. But as you can see now, 
we really have some drama and some mood. Let me let me meet it that because it might be might be a little a little hot. So we're getting four and two ten. So let's just bring it down just a little bit just to make sure we stay at four. Precision. Okay, boom. So now we're back at four. So as you can see, now we've got a lot of shadow there. But what you also can see is now that background is looking pretty good. Now, if I come back here and meter again on this background, so now we're getting F1. So now we basically have almost four stops difference between the light that was hitting the subject in that traditional beauty disposition versus now. So we're getting F4 on the subject, we're getting F1 on the background. So as you can see, we've really channeled a lot of that light away from the background. Now, of course, the further you can move your subject off of the background, then the better you're gonna be able to control the light hitting it. If I had my subject 10 feet off of the background and I had this light feathered this way, there probably wouldn't be any light that can hit it. And also keep in mind too, since I'm doing video, um, there is gonna be some ambient. It's the middle of the day, it's bright in here. So I am getting some ambient on this as well. So if this was a studio shoot where I was just using flash, this background would probably be even darker than that. Um, so now we have the light feathered. Now there's a couple things that I wanna to touch on here. Number one, we've got a lot of shadow on this side of the face and you might not like that. So we're gonna fix that. But before I do that, I wanna to touch on placement when you feather. Now, right now, the back of this beauty dish is basically lined up with the back of our subject's head. And so we're getting a lot of shadow on this side of the face, but we're also lighting a lot of the face that we're not seeing anyway. So we're really not capitalizing on the light. So when you feather your light, you wanna bring that light out. And my general rule is I like to have, let me make sure this is, this is straight. And I will meet it for good measure because, you know, I wanna make sure everything is good. I wanna keep it at F4 to stay consistent. I lost a little bit there. Let's turn that back up. Boom, so back at F4. So my general rule is I like to have the edge of my modifier lined up with the nose of the subject. So then that way I'm getting this channel of light right here that's gonna wash across my subject's face. And believe it or not, it will help to fill in those shadows. So I want you to really pay attention to the shadow side of the face, okay? And I'm gonna bring this modifier, I'm just gonna slide it back to behind the subject. And now I'm gonna slide it back in front of the subject. Now it might be subtle, but in bringing this modifier and having this light more in front of the subject, it does help to fill in those shadows. Now light does travel in straight lines, but light also bounces off of just about everything. So by having this channel of light in front, it's gonna bounce off of things and it's gonna to help to fill in those shadows more so than having the modifier behind your subject. And again, we don't need to light this side of the face, we don't need to light behind, and we obviously don't wanna light the background. So we want to have it more this way, okay? So now that I've touched on that, back to the split light. We've got a lot of shadow on this side of the face and we don't like that, right? So the easiest way to combat that is to use a reflector. And with the reflector, or you could bring in a second light as well. You, you can do, you, you would have more control with the second light, but in this situation, uh, it's very easy to use a reflector as well, okay? So now if I bring this in, now you notice right now, I've basically completely filled in those shadows. So I've gotten rid of all the mood at this point. So we wouldn't wanna have that in there. But the joy of using a reflector, excuse me, is that you do still have some control. So depending upon where we put that modifier and how close, or the reflector, and how close we have it to the subject, we can fill in those shadows however much we want to fill in those shadows. So that way we still have that mood, but we don't have this aggressive split lighting here. So again, however much you wanna fill that in, you have that flexibility to do so. And if you want a little bit more of a kick, definitely don't use gold, but you could use silver if you wanted a little bit more specularity in uh, your fill light there, you could use your silver to do that. So 
you can look at where we started and how much light we had on the background versus where we are now. We clearly have a much more moody look by having our light basically in a split light position. And then we either use our reflector or a fill light to uh, bring that in. Now, I told you I was gonna give you, show you an example of inverse square law. Now, let me bring this back around to this position here. And I'm not gonna move the mannequin because I've got so much stuff set up <laughs> to be able to show you guys all this stuff. I don't wanna move it all, but I, I do wanna show you, okay? So again, right now the way this is, um, I'm, I'm getting four point there, boom, four. And if I come back here and I meet her back here, I'm getting um, F2. So there basically is a two stop difference between here and here, okay? If I were to have the subject closer back here on the background, so I'm gonna move this light, I'm not gonna move the subject because again, I've got so much stuff in here that I'm having to work around already as it is. You're gonna to have to, now you know what? We're gonna move her. We're gonna move her because why not show you for real? This camera's flashing. I don't know why. Okay. So now, if I get this back to F4, so we're, we're a little hot, so let's bring it down till we get to F4, boom. So now we're at F4. Now remember, we were at F2 on this when she was five feet away. Now, Okay, so now she's two and a half feet, okay? Two and a half feet, so we got F4 on this subject. So now if I meter this here, I'm at, I'm at F3.5. So basically, about a half of a stop difference. So we went from being a two stop difference to being a half of stop difference. And the closer that you have your subject to the background, if we bring this even closer, and we meet her, we're at F4. So don't be in the shadow. And we're almost at F4 um, on the background as well. So the closer you have your subject to the background, obviously the harder it's gonna be to keep your light off of the background, okay? So where the inverse square law comes in is, well, let's bring, let's bring this back. Let's bring this back. Okay, and we still need to, we, we still want to meet it for F4 on our subject. So we got to kick the power way up now. Like way, way, way up. Will I even have enough power to get to F4 back here? F3.2, let's crank it out. I'm, I'm maxed out right now, so I might not be able to get to, to F4. Fortunately, no. Well, All right, so let's uh, let's increase the ISO here to ISO one hundred and sixty. We'll we'll go we'll go two hundred because this camera that I'm filming this on can't do ISO one hundred and sixty. Okay, so we'll we'll go two hundred and then we'll bring this down a little bit just to get us where we need to be. Boom, okay, so now we're at F4, this light is super bright. So now we're at F4, and we are also, so we're at F3.6 and 3 tenths, so I don't know what that calculates out to be. But essentially, you can see how much light we have on the background. So in order to get F4, and because of how far the light is away, we have a lot less fall off. So we're getting F4 here, we're almost getting F4 on the background, but you can see the background is so much more lit right now because of the fact that we're having to have so much power to get enough light back on our subject to be able to meet it for F4. And because that light is traveling so far, that fall off is getting less and less and less. Now, if I bring the subject back up here, 
okay? So now you can see the light is super, super crazy. I'm getting F9, right? So of course there's way, way too much light on the subject. Now pay attention to that background right now. So the power that it was at to be able to light, get an F4 with the subject back there, look at the background and watch uh, the background as I turn down this light. So you can notice we're starting to lose that light on the background. My F5. Okay, and so now I'm back to F4. So you could see a stark difference between the light that's hitting the background now versus where we were. The position of the light hasn't changed, but the fall off between where we are now because the subject is so much closer versus the light reaching all the way back here, the fall off is much more dramatic because we have the subject close to our light. So we have, basically you look at it as we have our concentration of light right here, and then that light falls off. And as we get back here, we have significantly less light back here than we do here. So that's essentially the way the inverse square law works. It is a mathematical type thing, but you don't need to know that. The only thing you need to know is that the closer your subject is to the light, the quicker that light is going to fall off past your subject, essentially. Okay. So if you want to be able to control the light that's hitting your background, the best thing that you can do is have your subject as close as to, as close to the light as possible. Now I have a video uh, talking about how you don't always necessarily want to have that abrupt fall off. Sometimes that's not very pleasing. Sometimes you can have the light so close to your subject that you have a fall off uh, very abrupt. As a matter of fact, if I put this back in the split light position here, okay, so I put that back in the split light, you can see that the fall off is very dramatic because it's so close. Now, if I bring this light back, and it might be out of frame at this point. Now, of course, I'm gonna to have to increase the exposure to keep my F4. Okay, boom. So now we're still at F4, but you can see because that light is further away, we still have split lighting. The light is still in a position to be split lighting, but we do have a little bit less of an abrupt fall off. And you would really need to be able to zoom in and not just see it in video to see that. But the transition from highlight to shadow isn't as abrupt because we don't have as abrupt of light fall off because the light is much further away. So we have a more smoother transition from highlight to uh, shadow. So when you're thinking about your light placement, where do you want to put it? How close do you want the light to be to your subject? How far should the subject be from the background? How far should the light be from the background and your subject? All of these things you need to think about what you're wanting to get out of your light. You need to think about everything. If you want a moody type of situation, how much light do you want on your background? How much light do you want on your subject? How much fall off do you want? Do you want the transition from highlight to shadow to be abrupt? Do you want it to be a little bit more smooth? All of these things will dictate light placement. They will dictate the modifier choice that you use. They will dictate the amount of power, light power that you're using, how you're metering, all of these things play a factor into what it is you want to achieve. So you need to know these things. So I always preach, don't just do something because someone like me told you to do it. Understand the fundamentals of everything so that you know what you're looking for and you can make your decision based off of the look that you want. Don't just do because someone said it, do because you thought about it and you know exactly what you're looking to get and you know what you need to do to be able to get it. So hopefully this video was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up on your way out. And if you like this content and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. As always, I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you like this more raw, long form content. I want to bring more of this to the channel. Um, I know the videos are longer, but I think it helps you to uh, better understand what needs to be done versus the videos where it's just things are just switching and then something goes from here to here. You don't really see what they did to get there. So I want to bring more of these things to the channel. So if you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments below so that I know if I want to continue to bring them. Because if 
no one likes them and I won't do them because it's a lot to set up everything to be able to bring these. So as always, I appreciate you being here. Until the next video, take care.